Hello, my name is Brad Huddleston. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a Linux-based virtual workstation. This is basically a Linux computer that you can run on your Windows uh, machine. That way you don't have to worry about trying to dual boot or trying to reinstall a different operating system or anything like that. You can simply run Linux from inside your Windows operating system as it is and not affect anything that you have already. So first of all, we're going to use something called VirtualBox to run these, uh, this virtual workstation. So just Google VirtualBox. And one of the first results should be this link to VirtualBox.org, the downloads page. So click on that one. And then, assuming you're on Windows, uh, click on this first link for Windows Hosts. It should download, it should prompt you to download something like that. You can see I already have that, uh, that installer downloaded. So download that installer and install VirtualBox. Once you have it uh, downloaded and installed, you'll open it up and it'll look something like this. You won't have anything over here in this list because these are going to be the desktops that you create. You can see I have two created already but we'll walk through how to actually create one. Now the next thing you'll need to create a virtual workstation is an operating system. So you can, any, any Linux distribution will work with this, um, but what we're gonna look at is a, a Zubuntu operating system. Uh, Zubuntu is a good one. There's uh, there's a lot of other good ones as well, um, but in any case, what you need to do is download uh, the the ISO, the disk image, essentially. So if you're using Ubuntu, then go to their page here and click on the download link. And what I did is I, uh, being in the United States, I clicked on this link, and then I downloaded this one here because I have a 64-bit machine. If you have a 32-bit machine, you can download this one right here. Either way, once you have that downloaded, uh, you can actually get started. So you can see I have, I have that ISO image, a disk image file downloaded for Zubuntu. All right, now let's get started on actually creating our virtual workstation. So inside VirtualBox, click on New. So first thing you need to do is name and choose what kind of operating system you're going to use. So we're just going to make this called tutorial and we're going to use Ubuntu 64 bit because it's the Ubuntu is basically a 60 uh, Ubuntu operating system and it's a 64 bit. So we'll use that and we're going to specify uh, two gigs of memory. You can, you can change this as you need to, but beware if you make it too small, your operating system won't work very well. Your virtual operating system won't work very well. And if you make it too large, then your Windows operating system won't work very well because your virtual machine is trying to take all the memory. So um, it gives you a pretty good guidance on, on how much you can use. And so I'm just gonna put it at there at about two gig. The next thing you need to do is create a, a hard disk drive. So this will be where the operating system is installed. So we're going to create a new one, um, and we're going to create it, uh, this virtual box disk image, and we're going to leave it dynamically allocated. We're going to call it tutorial, and we're going to save it uh, here. And we're going to leave it at 8 gig. Um, so this will be the, the virtual disk drive where all your stuff will be saved. So if you're needing to use a lot of data, we'll look at shared files as well, and you can store a lot of data that way, and you won't have to use this virtual image, uh, disk image. Um, but like the operating stuff and all your programs, they're going to be stored on, on this disk image. So make sure it's big enough that you won't run out of space on it, essentially. So 8 gig is going to be fine for this case. Um, you might need to go up to 
you know, 16, 20, depending on how many programs you're going to install. So we'll create that. And now we're ready to, we're ready to power it up. So we've created a virtual machine, but we haven't turned it on yet, essentially. So to turn it on, all you have to do is highlight it, click on it there, and click Start. Now, when you do that, the first thing that's going to pop up is this window that asks you to select a startup disk. Here is where you choose that ISO file uh, for the Linux distribution so that it can install it. So we're going to choose this Zubuntu one that we, in, that we downloaded, and then we'll click Start. And once you do that, the, uh, the virtual machine will basically power up, and you'll see the message is coming up just as if you were trying to install this on a a regular uh, computer. So it'll give us a loading screen and then so we're gonna actually install this Zubuntu and it'll take a few minutes so we'll fast forward through that part um, but I want to show you the first steps on how you install it and it's worth noting here that depending on the version of Linux that you are, are going to install. This can look a little different, but uh, all the Ubuntu's look basically like this, um, very small differences, and in fact most of the Debian style Linux distributions look like this with some uh, vari variations. But what we're going to do, we're just going to click install Ubuntu, and we're not going to do any of those things. You can if you'd like. Um, it won't be necessary for this one though. And then we're going to erase disk and install Ubuntu. So this is just going to erase uh, that that virtual drive that we created. So it's already empty, so that won't affect anything. And yes, that's what we want to do. And you can choose your time zone, wherever that is, and your language. And then finally, just name it here. So uh, we'll just put my name here. And you can put in a password. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about it. And because I'm using this as a virtual machine and I'm not going to store anything important on it, I'm going to click Login Automatically. If you know you're doing this and you're actually going to have important things on it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make that choice. But for this case, that'll be fine for me. All right, so starting here, it's going to install, and this will take a few minutes, so we'll fast forward through it, but I'll see you again. All right, and with that, the installation is complete. So you'll have to restart, not your whole computer, just your virtual computer here. So when you click this restart, it'll just restart your virtual workstation. And when it asks you to remove the installation media, you can just hit enter and it'll automatically um, unmount that disk image file. So when it restarts, there's a couple more things that we'll want to do to get this set up. and it'll help us, uh, help us be able to do a couple more things. For example, we, we want to be able to share files easily between your Windows operating system and your virtual operating system. So we'll set that up as well. So the first part of that that you'll need to do is install the, the VirtualBox add-ons. So to do that, up here in the top, click on Devices, and then click on Insert Guest Edition CD Image. So what that's going to do is it's going to mount the uh, this additional disk image so that we can install some of these uh, add-ons that will help us do more things. It'll add some more capability for us. So we actually want to run this, but what we're going to do is we're going to open up a terminal right there. So you see what I did? I'll make this more clear. Um, I'm going to right click inside this folder and then click open terminal here. 
Now the one we want to run is this auto run dot shell. So we're going to type auto run dot sh. And it's going to ask you to uh, authenticate. So this is where you type in that password that you created before. And then it'll start installing. All right, so that's all installed. Um, so we're going to have to restart this again. But before we do, um, let's go over here to view. And let's set the screen size to full screen size. So whatever your monitor size is, um, resize that to there. And when we restart that, uh, we'll be able to have a full screen window. OK, so now we're ready uh, to restart this. Actually, let's just shut it down. So however your operating system does that, just go to shut down. Once it shuts down, click on the one that you created here and click on settings. We're going to scroll down here to shared folders and we're going to add a shared folder. So hit this plus button over on the right. And I'm going to add um, a folder that I already have created, this Linux folder. And you can, you can create a folder for this to happen. So that's the one I'm going to use. You can use uh, whichever one you want. And then hit OK. And then hit OK, and we're ready. So let's start this back up again. And now you can see that the operating system is going to take up all of the screen, which is just a lot nicer to use. All right. So now, where is our shared folder? Well, a uh, couple things that we need to do to get that set up first. So I'm going to open up the terminal again, um, and I'm going to change into the home directory. So you can do that by CD and then this tilde. So this is my home directory. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a folder that will be my mount point for my shared folder. So. I'm going to make a folder here called shared, just to keep it simple. And then I'm going to do something. Uh, I'm, I need to mount that folder that I've shared at this point. Um, but I need administrator privileges to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type sudo mount and then tell it that it's a vbox file system. So it's this vbox sf. And then the name of that shared folder. So whatever yours is called, mine is called Linux, and then the place that you want to uh, mount it to. So in this case, it's home rad shared. And again, it'll ask you for that password that you created. So just do that, and it should be done. So if you if we change inside the shared folder, oops, you'll see this is, I don't have much in here at the moment, but you can see that this is this is here. And if we go in Windows, if we go to that folder, you'll see the same, the same file. So that way we can share, uh, share files across operating systems very easily. Now the last thing you want to do is you probably want this to happen automatically every time you log in. So in order to do that, uh, we need to uh, edit that automatic file. So again, we need administrator privileges to do that. So type sudo and then whatever the command is for your text editor. In Zubuntu, it's actually mousepad. It might be gedit. Um, you can also use, if you know how to use nano or something like that, you can use that. But we're going to edit this rc.local file. And in here, right before this exit zero, we're going to add that command that we typed in before uh, right here without the sudo. So we're just going to type mount t vbox sf linux home brad shared. So now every time we start the operating system, this shared folder will get mounted to that folder. And there you go. Make sure you save that. And now that'll happen every time. And with that, we're all set up to run our virtual Linux machine from Windows. Thanks for watching.